Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to stream. Welcome to the stream, everybody. Hello, hello. I'm playing Animal Crossing. Good choice. Brilliant choice. Hello, hello, everyone. Welcome to stream. Let me know if I sound okay. Let me know if I need to change anything. Up the music. Up me. Lower me. <laughs> Let me know if I need to do anything. Oh, no. Yeah, same. Um... But hello, hello, welcome to stream, everyone. I hope you're all doing good. I'm good? All right. Hope everyone's doing okay. Hope everyone's doing all right. We're in Photoshop today. Turn up my volume a little bit. Yeah, I can do that. Do I sound a little bit better now? Um, but yeah. As the stream title says, today is going to be all about drawing fur. We're going to be drawing... Fur. Um, we're gonna be talking about drawing fur techniques. I've been drawing by Dragon Boy and Corn for a while, so I guess it's Scribble's turn because Cat is what won the stream poll. So we'll be drawing a cat character. Um, so that means I'm drawing Scribbles. It's it's <laughs> that's what we're doing today. Um, but yes. Hello, hello. Today we are going to be working with fur we're gonna be talking about how to draw fur how to render it i'm not only gonna be talking about like you know realistic fur i'm also gonna talk about like fur with line art different types of fur um just to make it a little bit easier on people because some people don't render fur realistically and some people don't use line art so we're gonna be working a bit differently corn is not fuzzy no <laughs> corn is purely scaly um but all right before we get started let's do our little ad read portion because if you didn't know our growing community is filled with tons of art nerds and we art nerds have to stick together so if you'd like if you're an art nerd too be sure to check out the links to our social media in the description below and check out our website for our class offerings where you can get critique guidance and encouragement from our instructors because we're not just a youtube channel we are an art school too so if you'd like to support us we can keep making free content consider supporting us by becoming a youtube member for exclusive channel perks like emotes and sub badges or by supporting us on patreon for as little as two dollars per month where you can get access to Tons of perks like my working files, critique sessions, class recordings, and a huge discount on our classes that have a limited amount of spots, so be sure to check those out before they are gone. Alright, sick sick. You'll love to see it. Alright. But before we get going with anything here, before we get going with any of the drawing, we have to do the submissions! We have to do weekly submissions, because I forgot to do them last week. <laughs> so we're doing this week's and yesterday last week's. Um... We are doing both this week's and last week's art submissions. Oh, I forgot to pull up my little guide. Because it's... It's fan art this time around, and I don't know everything. Alright, this one is by Gunner in the Discord of the Dragon Sapphire from Wings of Fire. I've only read up to book five of Wings of Fire. So I had I have no clue who this character is, but I recognize the type of dragon. <laughs> Beautiful work on the scales on this. Really lovely. Well done on the anatomy. It's very hefty. It's nice. I'm a really big fan of dragons that feel like dragons. I'm not a really big fan of like dragons that are very like um like I mean my I don't really care, but like my preference is like dragons that are very like hefty by comparison to like what I call quote unquote Disney dragons. I really like my my hefty big dragons. Um, so I really love the way that this has been handled. Well done, Gunner. Thank you for submitting. All right. Oops. Next one is... Oh, I'm covering up the, the credits, bruh. It's by Clovar. K-L-O-V-A-R in the Discord. I'm sorry, here. Let me just... There we go. Credit to Clovar in the Discord. K-L-O-V-A-R in the Discord beautiful rendering on this we love the Azrael fight um from undertale i'm sorry i guess this is spoilers if you haven't played undertale but i guess it's, it's been out since 2014 so i'm sorry um but this is a this is a beautiful illustration i love this it's very well done um i love the rendering i love the very soft kind of harsh rendering it's very very great beautiful beautiful work all right this next one is by Hoayo. I think that's how you pronounce it, P-O-A-Y-O, in the Discord. Again, another lovely rendering. This one, I believe, is from the Owl House. Um, I've never watched the Owl House. 
<laughs> Every everybody loves the Owl House. It's the thing that I haven't gotten into, but this is a this is a really beautiful render. I love the softness of it. I love the way that you've taken the very cartoony style into your own hands and made it just slightly more realistic. And I really I love the way that this is one has been handled. Well done. Well done, well done. All right. Another Undertale one by Scoops. Scoops, S-K-O-O-P-S. I adore the rendering on this one. I saw this and I, I was like, oh my god. This this rendering is gorgeous. Really, really beautiful like way of handling these characters as well, Sans and Papyrus. You kind of turned them into like these more... I, I mean, the game is an RPG, but they really turned it into more of like a high fantasy sort of RPG style. And I, I love this. This is a... It's so gritty. It's so like... You re again, you really took the the fan art into your own style. You really made it something new. This is a really, really beautiful piece. Well done. Well, well done. All right. This next one is by Taller Del Bujo on Instagram. Doctor Strange. I had to get a had to get a traditional one in here. You love marker work. I wish I worked with more marker. I love marker. It's like one of my favorite traditional mediums. And this is a really, really, really well done piece. I believe this is Doctor Strange. Like, I'm, I'm pretty certain. <laughs> if I'm wrong, I'm so sorry. Cause, but um, this is a, this is a beautiful, beautiful. It's like, it's very fun. I love how simple it is. You really simplified the anatomy. And the line art's really fun as well. <laughs> yeah, Tala Del Bujo on Instagram. Well done. Very great job. How can I send in fan arts? On the Discord, exclamation point Discord, we have a art submissions section. Um, I'm so sorry if you can hear the... Oh, there's a... It's a uh, what's it called? A lawnmower outside. I'm so sorry. Um, next week is the last week that you can get in fan art submissions, though. We change the topic every week. Um, but yes. All right. Next one is by Krusty in the Discord. Another Owl House one. This one is The Collector. I had to look up this one. <laughs> Very fun. I like that. I'm, I'm a really big fan of just like really fun, cute characters. Again, I know nothing about The Owl House, but I really like this one. <laughs> I guess this character also just has a really fun design. So that kind of stuck out to me with this one. Um, but yeah, lovely work. Great work with the clean line art. We love to see it. All right. This next one is by Ghost Kiwi in the Discord of a uh, Hoseki no Kuni character. I believe I don't. I can't say the full name. I'm so sorry. I know it's like Foss. I think a lot of people call her Foss, but she is. This this one is gorgeous. This is beautifully rendered. I love the way you handled the hair. I love the way you handled the body. Just like it's a beautiful pose. It's a beautiful, um, beautiful render. I also need to watch Asuki no Kuni. I mean, I, I don't tend to watch anime. Like, if I if I really wanted to, I'd probably watch it with somebody. But I'm like, I'm more I'm more for reading manga, my comparison. But this is a this is gorgeous. Very very good job, Ghost Kibi. I don't know if you're on here, but this is a this is a beautiful beautiful piece. I love the way you handled the like crystallized hair, like really really well done. That one's gorgeous. This one's gorgeous. This next one is by Lavender Lizards, Alolan Vulpix. I, I'm still, the Alolan line is still, like, the Alolan variants of the Vulpix line, amazing. I love how cute this one is. I, I, I just really like Alolan Vulpix. Like, I, just, I don't know what else to say. Um, because, I mean, like, Alolan Ninetales is to die for. And, like, Alolan Vulpix is adorable, so, like, what am I going to say? All right, this is, this is really, really cute. Love to see it. Thank you for submitting. I love the... I also really love the, the way you handled the crystals here. It's a very different way of handling it by comparison to Ghost Kiwi. Um, but it still works. And you can still tell that it's crystals. And I think... Ugh, and I think that that's what's most important. All right. And the last one that we have here is by Onion Tunes of Nova the Human Rocket. This one's really interesting. Really great work with the pose. I like how you've added a bit of an action pose. Tried to get some interest with the background in here. And the background's quite busy, but it's a smart idea for you to add like this kind of blue outline to it to make it so that it sticks out just a little bit more. And thank you for putting your, your name on the bottom so I don't have to put it in myself. <laughs> it just says Onion Tunes on the bottom. Um, 
fan drawings like this have to go through the Patreon? No, it has. It goes through the Discord! Exclamation point Discord! It'll be in the Art Submissions channel. Just make sure that you are following the guidelines for each each month's theme. This theme for the month is fan art, so all of them are fan art. Um, so it's fan art this month. The month before it was um, OCs or character designs. Um, so next week will be the last week of fan art, and then we'll have a whole new theme afterwards. So if you join the Discord, you'll have the opportunity to submit stuff. Um, but yes, also really good work on the on the shiny bits, like the gold bits. Great work on that. I'm really bad at metal rendering. So that these these are nice. This is really good. Good work on that. I believe that's it. I believe that's all. Yes, it is. Thank you, everyone, to who submitted. These are beautiful pieces. Thank you for submitting. Thank you for allowing me to share your work on stream. <laughs> but all right. Let's get to... Oh, uh, goodness. Let's get to the main focus of today. Should I sign my work with my real name or YouTube name? That's up to you, man. I tend to sign my stuff with my actual name and then if I post it on... Or, like, my actual signature. And then if I post it on, like, Twitter or something, then I also put my handle, like, as a watermark. But it's up to you. But all right. So fur. Oh, I should use a different brush. Let's switch to this one. There are many different ways to draw fur, and your process will change based on your style and the type of fur that you decide to draw, right? There are many, many different ways to draw fur, right? And the thing is, is that fur, fur, it really, the only things that matter really when drawing fur are the length. It's because fur is very, it's hair. It's hair, basically. It's just now that we have, now we have hair on the entire body, right? So there are a lot of different ways that you can draw fur and your process will change based on your style and your type of fur. So let's talk about rendering first. So rendering. Actually, let's not call it that because rendering can mean a lot of things. Let's call it painterly. Let's do that instead. painterly styles when i say a painterly style i mean we are talking about very like painted in very like more more realistic in terms of the way that we draw in fur right so painterly styles let's not lock this let's unlock this one hello thank you oh no we need to lock this one unlock this one oh that's fine Let's talk about a painterly style first. You want to work in layers, dark to light. With no line work, right? So painterly styles, when we work with more painterly styles, oh, so 
low to high. Painterly styles mean that you're going to be working as if you were painting something, right? Especially when we're working with more realistic looking fur. It looks a lot better if you, you know, start with the darkest areas with a very low amount of detail first and then get into a higher scale of detail. So let's say that we had, let me actually just put in like a, like a mid-toned gray background really quick. I'm just going to draw on a patch of fur really quickly. Let's say that we were doing like wolf's fur. Let's say we were doing like very sh like shaggy kind of like grayish fur, right? I would start with the darkest base layer of fur first, right? I'd color it all in with flats, right? Wouldn't have to worry too much about anything. And determine which direction the fur is going to be going in. So I'm thinking that the fur is going to be going in this direction, right? It's going to be going back down that way. And then let's say that I wanted to continue this. I kind of like this first pass that I've got going on. And then I'm going to start adding in, I'm going to add in another layer of fur. Now we're also going to make it a little bit lighter and let some of these brush strokes show up. The beautiful thing about Photoshop is you can tell the shape of my brush just by looking at it. So notice that I'm not using a hairbrush. I'm using a very rectangular kind of textured brush. All right, so we start with something that looks like this. Let's say that I'm like satisfied with that. I'm like, okay, I'm going to keep going. Shift my color up. I'm actually going to shift the hue a little bit closer to yellow. Make my brush a little bit smaller. And then continue from there. So now I'm adding another layer of fur on top of that. This is a, a very painterly, B very traditional. There are ways that you can speed this up by using a hairbrush or by using a brush that is meant for fur or something like that. I have a brush specifically meant for scales. So um, I don't really draw in realistic fur that much. So I don't really have a problem with just rendering it in myself. <laughs> if you ever feel like you've gone too far in one direction, you can always bring it back because that's the beautiful thing with digitals. You don't have to worry about it layering too much. All right, let's say that I'm satisfied with that going to bring it up some more. Again, make it a little bit lighter. Change the shape of my my brush once more. And this time I'm going to really make it like a little bit more detailed. Now we're really going to press in with just this, this just a little bit more. I'm doing this as if it was just like a little hank of fur, like if I was just pinching it out one side. I'm not really thinking about it as if it was attached to something, because you gotta think if you gotta think a little bit differently if it's attached to something, and I'll talk about that when we get to the less traditional way of working. You just gotta keep on adding these strange little amounts of layers. Technically you can do this for hair as well. I don't one hundred percent recommend it unless you're working like a little more realistically, but Actually, I should have changed the hue of this a little bit as well. It's okay. I should learn how to draw humans. You should. It's fun. And then again, if I'm not really into some of this, I can just adjust. All right. There's always ways that you can fix it a little bit. Bring it back a little bit. Because with fur and everything like this, your detail should come last. You should start with lower amounts of detail and then think about finishing it up with more detail as you get closer to the end. It shouldn't be a thing that you start on. You can kind of have something that looks like this. all about working in layers. All 
right? So a little painterly style, work in layers, start from dark, go to light with no line work. And you start with low detail and then get into higher detail, right? This is a more slightly like, I want to work, I want to make this a little bit more realistic. I want to make this a little bit more, you know, uh, what's it called? I want to make this a little more realistic. I want to make this a little bit more like traditionally painterly. And that's how this one works. Right? This isn't the only way, right? There's other ways to make stuff painterly without it making, without it being super, you know, realistic. Let's say that we're doing something a little bit more stylized. The thing with stylization that is that it's hard to, hard to teach because stylization is different from person to person. So I'll just show you how I would do a stylized fur. All right, so something a little bit more stylized. Looks like an owl pellet, true. So everyone stylizes differently, but the main things you need to know are direction of growth, length, and texture, right? The texture of your fur will change how it looks, right? If it's curly, if it's coarse, if it's smooth, it's soft, right? A chinchilla's fur looks different than a wolf's fur, right? Because a chinchilla is very, very soft, a wolf is very, very coarse, but a wolf will also look different than, say, a poodle, because poodle's fur is very, very curly, right? So how I like to stylize my fur, the thing is, is that the process is very, very similar to this. Right? We start with a specific hank like this. And then we move on from there. Sorry, give me a second. Okay, we're all good. Okay. So let me just use let me just use this same hank of fur again. So let's say that I had like something that I was going to make into like fur. I was going to make something fuzzy. I'm going to paint it. Right. For me, I still do the same thing. I like to, you know, start with a low amount of detail, get to a high amount of detail, but I never make my fur this like, it's like hefty. I am very much a fan of like chunkier bits by comparison to very small coarse bits. So I still start with this low level of detail, get into higher levels of detail as I go on, but I like to have much chunkier bits of fur by comparison to the thin, more realistic hair looking sort of thing. The thing is, is with my way of working is that it is very trust the process. So it starts off looking very, very funky and then you have to like reel it back, you know? Again, I'm working with this kind of long wolf fur sort of deal. Just to make it consistent throughout each one, just to show you the comparison. When we get to the line work portion, that's when everything's going to look a little bit different. Because then I'll talk about the way you would line different types of fur. The thing is, is that people will always ask you what's the right way to do something. And the thing is, is that there really isn't one. It's just how you decide to work. What is the right way to work is understanding what it is that you're drawing. If you don't have an understanding of what it is that you're looking at, then there is a higher chance that you will not look right. Because all styles need reasoning. You need to understand what it is that you're doing in order for it to look okay. 
Because if you just decide to do something and then have no other explanation than, oh, it's my art style, there's a high chance that you're doing it wrong. So for me, I choose to do it this way because I my style tends to be more simple. I tend to like... Um, simple in terms of, like, a, the, the semi-realistic styles you'll see. So I very much like to sacrifice detail in areas where I don't think I need them for compositional purposes. So for me, sacrificing detail comes with stuff like fur and patterns and textures. So I sacrifice textures for detail in other places. So my stylized way of doing fur is my way of sacrificing these textures to uplift another area of my work that I think needs more attention. All styles need an explanation. Sometimes I need a very technical explanation, like, oh, this style requires a different head height. Oh, this style requires a different thing for aesthetic purposes. Aesthetic purposes is also fine. But you need to understand why those aesthetic purposes work you need to understand how that works for you. You mentioned scales. Will there, there be a video on painting those? I kind of did a scale video, or we kind of did a scale video a long time ago with the reptile anatomy. Joanne, if you can find that, that'd be sick. Um, but I did scales in that one, but it's kind of scuffed because I was very, it was very rushed and I didn't think about like Medibang's uh, capabilities. So that was kind of a scuffed, uh, it was kind of a scuffed streak. It was a scuffed stream and a stuff scuffed lesson, I think. But yeah, this is a much more painter, like stylized painterly way of working with fur. Alright, so you notice how I started with sort of a blob and then I went into less of a blob as it kept on going, right? Thank you, Joanne. Um, but it's like you wanna start with low detail to high detail and that's kind of like how a lot of painters will work start with that low detail and work into high detail and you'll kind of get where you're going with but all right oh did somebody talk about doing the eye in different in two different ways Okay, I would totally give you, like, a little rundown on that, but this is not an eye stream. If you want the eye stream, we've done- we just did an eye stream, so if you'd like to see that. I believe that Vanessa did that one. It's you- yeah, Vanessa did that one, I believe. So if you'd like to check out those- I think that one's expressive eyes, though. Actual eyes is a really old stream of ours. So these are the two things that I'm kind of going to go over with painterly looks, right? I'm not really going to go anything heavier than this because everywhere else is going to take forever. So let's go into the lines works. Let's go into lined fur. I don't actually want to spend too long on this section because I do, I am going to be painting in the, the character, just so you can see how I would paint in short fur, which is why I haven't talked about short fur at all, because I'm going to be working with a short fur cat. So let's talk about lined fur. Lined fur is a little bit different. Right. So when lining of when lining fur, this one is very much something that like I see a lot of people do is when they are lining fur, they will just line everything. They'll line everything or they'll color everything or they'll add in every single bit of texture. Right. When lining and coloring fur in a simplistic style, don't draw fur, imply it. Right. Too much detail means there's no detail at all. If you had in like, say, if you were drawing in like a dog 
Fun fact, I'm actually very bad at drawing dogs. So let's say if we had a dog. <coughs> um, maybe let's just like... People were like, draw a mind horse. I'm bad at dogs, dude. That's the one that I can't do. I can do horses just fine. So let's say we had like a dog. Oh, sheesh. Uh... <laughs> I can do dogs as long as I have a reference. Working referenceless with with a dog is where I struggle. I'm not really great with referenceless dogs. So let's say that we have like a dog. Oh, the legs is where I start to struggle. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> okay. Uh. <laughs> My visible strength. <laughs> uh. Okay. I got a bit cat-like there. That's okay. So, <laughs> let's pretend that this dog looks okay. Um, but if, say, if I was to draw a dog, right, add on the fur onto this dog that looks like a very strange mix between, like, a beagle and a dachshund and a, I don't know. But let's say I was to add fur onto this dog. Let me, let me create a couple layers for this dog. If I started lining this dog, started adding fur onto this dog, let's say that I wanted to give it like more, more long fur, right? I wanted to imply, add more fur onto there, all right? Let's say that I just started just drawing in all this fur like i'm like let's say that i was gonna turn this into a collie and i'm like i want to add in every single little bit of fur when i'm lining i'm gonna put it everywhere let's pretend let's say that i can actually draw in the shapes of the fur too like i'm just gonna start adding lines lots of fur it's a very fuzzy fluffy dog so i'm just gonna add in lots of lots of these lines right don't do this. <laughs> this is so much. This is way too much, right? A lot of the times when you're drawing in fur, it's a lot easier if you imply the edges of the fur, but don't actually draw in every single line. You can add in a couple extra lines to show off that it's fluffier, but it actually looks better if you add in less with your lines. Because now this reads a lot better. It has an easier silhouette, has a bit easier to look at, right? It's much simpler. It's much, much simpler, right? It's a much simpler way of drawing. It takes a lot less time. And it also gets the point across a bit better. Let's say that we had this simple style. Oops. Let's say that we had this secondary simple style, right? And we're like, okay, now I have to color in the fur. I've got to color in what it is that I'm working with. So let me put these on both the dogs. Let's say that I got to color what I'm working with. The collie, so I'll just kind of give it this like brownish. Oops. I mean, I know that it's supposed to be like white and brown and whatever. I'm just going to give it whatever fur color I want. I don't care. So let's say that I gave it like this kind of baseline for fur. 
right? I'm not going to color in the whole dog. It's going to take forever. So let's say that I kind of gave it this baseline for fur, right? And then I'm like, oh, now what I can do is I can imply all this fur and I can imply all the fur that I didn't add on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. Let's take my texture painting brush. And now I'm going to add in all these extra little lines in here. And I'm going to make it like... Like really, really extra detailed. And I'm going to like really overuse the, the... What's it called? The like... Why is my smoothing so high? I'm going to like use the... Like say if I had a hairbrush. Right? I'm going to like draw in all these extra little lines. It was here. Right, let's say that I just, I went just totally ham on this, or I made it like hyper realistic. Let's say that I, I really, really made this crazy. Like I'm just going to add in all these extra lines. Don't do this either. <laughs> this is so busy. This is so, so busy. And you have no need to make it this busy, right? There's a reason why we simplified the lines, because we're going to simplify the, the coloring as well. You could make the coloring a little bit less simplified. Whoops. You could make the coloring a little bit less simplified. If you really wanted to, you could have it be a little bit more painterly on the coloring side, but you'd need to make it strategic so that it matches the style that you're going for, right? Having very hyper-realistic fur inside of non-realistic line work doesn't look right. So you need to match the styles so that they feel coherent. So if I had fur that looked like this, all and with lines that look like this, all I would do is I would actually just cell shade this. So I wouldn't even have in like extra. I wouldn't even have like a lot of extra, like, uh, what's it called? Like fur lines. I would just kind of do something like this. Actually, let's. This is a bit too dark. There we go. Let's say like I just wanted like a simple shadow. Of course, my shadow isn't just gonna be like a hard edge, it's gonna be like in the shape of the fur, it's gonna have those fur lines, but it's not gonna be as busy. It's gonna be a little bit simpler. It's gonna match the way that the fur grows, but that's about it, right? I'm not gonna add in a crazy amount of detail. I'm not gonna add in a crazy amount of anything, right? Just enough to get the point across. It's just enough to get the idea. Oh, you did the Collector Oblivious OB. Fantastic, I'm glad. What'd you miss? We just talked about painting fur, and currently what we're doing is we're talking about stylizing fur. Right? And maybe I wanted my highlight in there, so I'd add in again just a few little specks of highlight on the top, like this. Right? And then maybe I wanted some bounce light. So let's say there's a little bit of bounce light underneath. I'm gonna add in a, bun a little bit of that too. Just to give it a little bit of dimension. Right? This feels a lot more concrete than this, right? You need to make sure that your coloring matches the dimensions of your line work, right? <laughs> no worries. It looks great. Um, but yes, so this is pretty well what you'd want to think about. Let's merge all these. So like I said, when lining and coloring fur in a simplistic style, don't draw fur, imply it. Too much detail equals no detail at all, right? Just make sure. Your style is harmonious. And less is more. Why blue? Um, blue is a very common bounce light color. Uh, some people do it uh, like like if you have no other color to do because of like the color of the sky. Um, 
it just it just depends on where the person is if you're in like an area where there's a lot of neon lighting your bounce light might be like a totally different color or if you're in like a dark area and there's like an orange light somewhere your bounce light might be orange it just depends on what your secondary light source would be um in this case if i have nothing else to add i just put blue because blue is just a nice color <laughs> as you just managed to pronounce your username properly did i brilliant i'm glad Making comic using animals, so this is really helpful. Fun fact, my own webcomic, I taught myself how to draw bird wings from the bird stream, so. <laughs> Ray, my favorite human being, hello, welcome in. We're drawing fur. Squibble's drawing is later. Hello, Marlene, welcome in. Hello, my favorite human being. My favorite person. Twitter.com slash Numawick. Twitch.tv slash Numawick. Lotus from the show that shall not be named. Crazy. <laughs> All right. Make sure your style is harmonious and less is more. Okay. So let's talk about the different kinds of fur that you can draw as well. Because EB valid. So there's a very, very simple, I'm just going to go over like a few different like fur textures really, really quickly. Cause I don't want to, I don't want to spend too long. We've already spent way too long on this. So let's speed through this section. So again, if we had longer fur, my way of doing it, um, let's say that I had a bit underneath. I'm going to do, I'm just going to, you know what? I'm just gonna draw another dog. I shouldn't have merged this. I'm gonna... <laughs> oh, you know what, actually? And now, if I just... Where's the merge? Let's unmerge these. Paste this in. And then I can take a dog. Yes! Okay, so I'm just gonna keep using this dog. <laughs> oh, hi, witchy! Oh my gosh, it's been forever. How are you doing? But yes, thank you. Yeah, no, we have a our all of us have different PNG tubers, courtesy of Iggy, who taught us how to use this software. And I've been teaching all my other friends to use this software. <laughs> we love recycling for real. Um let's say that I took this dog. I'm gonna I'm just gonna give this dog different textures. I'm gonna give it a few. Let's do four. Make it a little bit easier. Again, remember that these are kind of just like how I would handle these. There's no right or wrong way. I'm, I'm pretty sure you guys just want to see how I would handle it, but like just as like a reminder, nothing that I do is like solid. You can handle stuff in most ways that you want. Disney's recycled their sequences. That's just called smart animating. If you have the shot that you need, why not just reuse it? All right. So let's say we had long hair, same as before, right? The collie. How I do it is I would kind of just add in longer strands at the end. It's the, um, what's it called? The extremities that have the majority of the hair that you're looking for, right? So the very ends of everything are the ones that will have the most amount of hair or areas around the face or stuff where you want to accentuate like forms. This is kind of how I would handle longer fur. How do you transition skin into fur? So usually what I do is I start with, it's very similar to like, if you've ever watched a doll artist um, add fur or um, hair onto like the side of a doll's face, 
Um, very similar to that, actually. So what I would do is I would start with smaller bits of um, fur that start on the face, and I would match it to how, like, let's say facial hair would grow or how body hair would grow. And then you would just lengthen it. So it would start off as something a bit smaller and then it would grow in length from there. So this is like longer fur. So let's make these slightly more fluffed up. Right, so if we had longer fur. strokes right so detail around the extremities with longer strokes right let's say we're having shorter fur let's say we've got like a short fur critura right let me actually just make this really easy oh wait it's because this isn't at 100 percent. hang on let's do this that makes it easier so if we had short fur Short fur is something where it, you really want to imply it. It's so like if something's fuzzy, all I ever really do is just add like little lines like that. I don't even give it like proper coating. Just those tiny little extra bits of lines, and not along the whole, not along the whole body. You notice I'm just putting them on very specific points. Just kind of putting them around there randomly. Well, not randomly. I'm putting them around there where, like, curves would happen. Everybody who is asking me to do curly fur, please stop. There are four dogs. I am doing four different things. Please calm down. So. Right? Shorter fur, not too much to imply, just little lines around the areas where you don't need it. Or not where you don't need it, sorry. Around the areas where you think that fur might be a little bit more prominent, right? Around bends, around stuff like that. All right, so short fur. Some people don't even add in these little lines. Like, if you really wanted it to look like a fuzzy creature, then you can just add in these little lines, but you really don't have to, especially if it's a really short fur dog or a really short fur cat. Like, some people just leave the line smooth and it's perfectly fine. But if you're gonna leave the line smooth, then that means that you really can't imply the fur that much in the coloring. So this is more so if you really wanted to imply the fur in the coloring. I was fur weighted. What do you mean by that? He's just streaming in the background of your stream. Yeah, no. Poor guy. Has he gotten any farther, Merlene? Or is he still in the is he still in the sewers or that general area? Look on the fluffy tail, the fur hangs off down while the top, the tail is flatter. Yeah, yeah. So it's the same as like how you would, yeah, no, so the, you're, you got it right. So it's the same as like how our hair would work, right? If we have longer, straighter hair, then our hair falls and waves. But if we have curly hair, then it'll hold its shape a bit better. How to have good handwriting like yours. Bestie, this is not good handwriting. This, I'm, I'm struggling. <laughs>
So my handwriting, so this is not my natural handwriting. I am a cursive, I write in cursive. So my handwriting looks like this usually, but then like, I can't teach with cursive because not everybody can read cursive. So like, like if I went, like this is my handwriting because like that's, but nobody can read it. I remember I handed in an assignment. I've handed in three different assignments where my prof is like, um, Jess, can you resubmit this? I can't read this. I'm like, okay, sure. <laughs> Cause nobody can read, nobody can read cursive. Oh, he just fell into the sewer again. No, F. I learned how to read cursive because of me. New skills, new human skills. All right. Where's this? All oh, right. I was just trying to figure out where that is. See, Joey, they used to teach us all in third grade. Um, I was one of the last generations that ever had to learn cursive because it's no longer required anymore. So it's not taught in schools here anymore. It used to be though. I still think it should be taught. Not just, not for like, not for me being traditional, but because I think it's pretty and people should learn to have pretty handwriting. <laughs> so we've got longer, fluffier hair. We've got shorter hair. Here you go, all of you. Let's do some curly hair. So when we're doing curly hair, this one's a little bit tougher. Well, y'all, no patience. Somebody commented, do you think Santa feels the same way on Christmas? No! <laughs> so mean. So curly hair is funky because this one is one where you really do have to understand your balance. And your shapes will change. So rather than just doing these kind of lines or these little ones, now you're gonna have a lot of very compressed short lines like this. Don't try to draw in things that look like this. We are not making springs, we are making short curls. And the thing is, wait, who fell on a sewer? Oh, another friend of mine is streaming right now. He's streaming Jump King. But now we are doing very short curls. And the thing is, is that all of our curls, by comparison to human hair, it's where we have longer strands that are curled. They all have very short strands that are curled like this, that all go in like one direction as they curve that way, right? So we're not making very traditional curves. We are, our very traditional curls, we are making fur curls, which are different than human hair curls, right? And in this case, implying these curls is with a lot of just small, short, curved lines. But with curved fur, curve, curled fur, really keep it to the extremities. When I say the extremities, I mean the, the places where, like the edges, keep it to the edges of the illustration. Because if you like make it, um, if you make it so it's all over here, it's gonna be way too busy. Same thing with over there, but uh, same same principle that I taught earlier, right up here, right? You don't wanna add in too much, but with curled hair, curled fur specifically, you really wanna keep it to just the extremities. It's gonna make it really tough for yourself if you make it anything um, more than that. So you notice how I kind of have this recurring pattern going on. Streaming about today, it is fur. We're talking about fur. Then on the tail, usually the tail is not that curled. So it's more just like Goes out like that a little bit more. Mm 
the thing with drawing fur and drawing hair, right? You can know how to do it. Anything you can know in theory, it takes a lot of practice. Like having this kind of like movement with the hands takes a lot of practice to get used to, right? It's not something, oops, it's not something that you can, that you have automatically. It is very much something that you gotta practice and work with over and over. And it'll get easier as you continue on. When you understand the groove, when you understand how you're working. You want to curl it, detailing around the extremities and only the extremities. So this is kind of like long curls. Let's do tight curls. So tight curls are very different. Tight curls are very much like... This one is very much like this sort of... It's almost like you're drawing it like a bush or like how you draw a sheep. So these are very tight, small curls. Say if you had like a specific type of poodle, or if you're actually drawing a sheep, or if you're drawing like a, like a certain type of borzoi, something like that. Uh, actually, no, borzoi are more like this. This is more like a poodle. All right, so this one is very much almost like this pattern. But you want to make these curls tight. You want to make them very, very tight. Literal sheepdog, yeah. So these are, this is like very, very tight curls that are kind of hard to work with. These ones, I think, are some of the hardest ones to make look nice. I'm not really good at these. I think that they're like, it's kind of just like, okay. Borzoi, B, O, R. Z O I Borzoi. People know them as the long dogs, or some people call them the Dark Souls dogs. <laughs> I like Borz Borzoi. I think they're very strange looking, and I like them a lot. They do look like a Dark Souls dog, though. It's true. <laughs> so this is very much like short curls. Or sorry, not, not short curls, tight curls. Like tightly curled, tightly packed curled dogs. All right, I spent way too long on this, but okay. Let's say we've got something that looks like this, and this is like a very tightly packed, tight curled dog. There you go. <laughs> Tight curls. It's a lot of that. So, with short hair, you could also say that this is, like, just mildly fuzzy. Like, if you had just, like, a beagle or something, this also works. Um, this is for, like, collies, golden retrievers, and whatnot. This one's for, like, borzois, cocker spaniels, that kind of deal. This one's for, like, poodles or, um, like, tightly sheared poodles and stuff like that. Right? But yes! Alright! So that's like fur with line work, right? This kind of shading would look pretty good on the longer one, look pretty good on the curled one. You could actually just keep it mostly flat for the short ones. Tight curls, you'd have the same principle as if you were drawing coily hair, like just on people. 
Right, that sort of deal. But all right. Oh, I accidentally turned that layer back on. Let's just keep that on. Okay. But there we go. That is the fur portion. The actual drawing lesson portion that took way too long. It should not have taken this long. That's okay. Whatever. <laughs> All right, so this means we get to do the illustration portion, which means I get to draw scribbles, and that's what matters. <laughs> okay. Yeah, hairless dogs would just be the base dog that I drew. Squibbles. Why is fur around the neck more propped up in the other areas? I could not tell you. This is just the anatomy of dog. <laughs> Do I know what I'm gonna draw? Yep, so if you've ever seen, if you are used to here on the channel, if you, but if you're, then you know, but if you're not, then we always have weekly polls that we do that I that determine what I'm going to be drawing. This week y'all voted on a cat character, which just means that I get to draw one of the D&D &D characters, so. I'm gonna draw Squibbles, who is our cat, our tabaxi character. So that's who, uh, when the stream started, that's who this is. Squibbles is our cat character on the party. I play a dragonborn, but I usually draw corn, so Squibbles is here now. <laughs> He's a tabaxi wizard bard with a New York accent. Squibbles. Scribbles. Scribbles. McPaws. Yes, that's his name. <laughs> Scribbles is played by Pulse or Pulse Effects on Twitch.tv. The speedrunner. So confused on the name. Oh no, you shouldn't be. This is this is just how Pulse names all of his characters. Hey, I'm walking here. No, in in session. <laughs> so funny funny thing is that in session, um, there was a point where Scribbles was like having a fit and he was like I'm talking here and it was really funny <laughs> it's like you shut up dragon boy it was a great time to Pierce who's an Eldrin elf but he, he's a Drake Warden Ranger see I said I was going to render it but now that I'm looking at the time I'm probably just going to line this Oh no, he loves coffee. That's that's another thing of his. He's like, I want coffee. He always wants coffee. Scribbles always wants coffee. Yeah, Scribbles is a tabaxi. But he very much just looks like a cat. So it's like... <laughs> He works for a newspaper station called the Meowning News. Scribbles is the best. He's so fun. How old is Scribbles? Scribbles is 13. See, he's, he's, uh, he and I, so Pulse and I play the kids of the party. So he plays as a 13 year old, I play as an 8 year old. The Meowning News, it's great, right? Because it's just a tabaxi-owned newspaper station. It's so funny. I did art for Leviathan? Yes, I did. I made him considerably more cat-like than Cryo was envisioning, though, Marlene. Can I pet him? Scribbles loves scratchies. He loves getting scritches. That was, like, the first thing that he made us all do, was, like, give him, like, pets. Has Corrin ever tried to pet him? See, the meme is that, like, when we first met, Scr 
Scribbles was very, like, forceful about getting us all to pet him. And Pierce, my, like, guardian, he was like, you wanna pet Scribbles? And Corn kind of sat there for a second and was like, I don't, I don't know if I want to. So it's just, I've never pet Scribbles before. Corn has never pet Scribbles. They're good friends, though. <laughs> Thought of his Cheshire Cat from Alice in Wonderland, the phase at least. Yeah, same. I was told that I made him, I drew the same thing, but I made him more, uh, apparently I made him considerably more cat-like than he was thinking. So, maybe at some point I'll redraw him. He's baby. Scribbles is a troublemaker. Scribbles is a gremlin. See, he looks very cute, but he is a troublemaker and very petty. <laughs> I love Scribbles, but we spent a whole two hours of just Scribbles being petty about something. Scribbles is our petty character. If Leviathan has fur canonically, you can ask. Or you could just re-listen to episode 36 and figure it out. Oh, I told Pulse a bit ago that you guys liked Scribbles from last stream. I remember talking about him and all y'all were like, Scribbles! Pulse is very pleased that you all like his character. <laughs> Can't decide if your cat character is gender fluid or uses any pronouns. I mean, corn's trans, so like, do whatever you want, man. We have a line art stream, Glory Knight. Makes me want to get Photoshop. I use SAI. SAI is perfectly fine. If you are used to SAI, you probably won't like Photoshop. You would probably be better off getting like CSP. Like, I personally really like Photoshop, but it's to each their own. What's Corn's pronouns? He, him. Corn is a, was assigned female at birth, so he is it's my trans character. Does SAI have free? No, no, it's fifty bucks. I like Photoshop, but it makes my laptop lag too much. It takes a long, yeah, no, it's it's it takes a lot of RAM. <laughs> Photoshop is a it's a very hefty program. Corn is eight. Yeah, corn is eight years old. Fire alpaca. Fire alpaca is like the simpler version of uh, Medibang. Oh, the ram hunger is real. Oh, a hundred percent. Oh no, you were rendering a video at the same time as using Photoshop? Absolutely not. Whenever I would have to render a video, I would have to close one or the other. I would actually just close everything when I was rendering a video. Like, if I was rendering a video, then I just, like, closed all my other programs and just let it sit. Because my computer would lag like crazy. It doesn't do that anymore, but it used to, and it was awful. Where are these characters from? Oh, they're my D&D characters. Um, Corn is mine. Pulse's character. This is uh, another character. Within our D&D campaign, this is, uh, Scribbles. He's not my character, but he's one of the other players' characters. My character is Corn. He's the one I drew most, draw most of the time. So 
to have Adobe Animate? Absolutely not. I <laughs> I think the only Adobe product that I'm okay with is Photoshop. Illustrator I'm kind of okay with, but like I can't. I can't. How do you play D&D? &D? I cannot explain it. <laughs> in a single thing. It is a lot. I love the difference between the characters, but then what actually happens in campaign? True. Like, you can look at their designs and you'll never guess what- No, that's not true. I think you can guess what Lunin's like just by looking at him, but I love Lunin. <laughs> Scribbles, you got it. Just like the first time, Lavender Lizards. It is it is quite literally just how you'd spell the word Scribbles. And corn is just like how you'd spell the word corn. <laughs> I do not give the brushes I am using, no. I can tell you where I got them from, but I cannot give you mine. Yeah, it's just spelled scribbles. It's just the, the normal way you'd spell scribbles. Oh yeah, no, it's I'm pretty sure it's Medibang. I'm not I could be wrong, like if it was Medibang. I'm not certain. All the music can be found in the description. I have linked the stream that I'm getting this song from. Duplicating the eye. I duplicate the eye if the character is staring straight forward. I don't duplicate it if they're not staring straight forward. Cause like my 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 philosophy is like if if they're not staring straight forward, then the shape of the eye changes. And like you can't just you can't just leave that. Do I flip my canvas? Sometimes. I usually do, but like I've just kind of forgotten to this time. Just because I'm trying to be fast. Thank you for the $2 donation! Bracket smiley face friend. Thank you, Bestie. I'm hoping you're enjoying the stream. But yeah, you should flip your canvas. There's a point where, like, you kind of, like... I find that a lot of artists, like, we flip our canvases a lot, but then sometimes it's, like... At a point, you kind of know when something's off without flipping your canvas. But you're right, I should be flipping my canvas. I just keep forgetting to. <laughs> Rocket smiley phrase friend. I'm sorry, I don't know what else to call your username. <laughs> you don't have any letters. <laughs> if you want to know what brushes I use today, um, currently I am using an anchor from a um a place called True Get True Grit Texture Supply. I really love their anchor, their ink selection. Um, I use a lot of Kyle T. Webster brushes. My sketching brush is a homemade one, um, but my inkers are usually from other places. I unfortunately cannot redistribute them because I paid for them. Um, but if you would like to try and find them yourselves, I cannot stop you. <laughs> True Grit Texture Supply. That is the one, Joanne.
It's one of submitted stag. My name is King. Oh! All right. Thank you for the $2 donation, King. Wish I could try Photoshop one day. There's a free trial. Why do we flip our canvases? It gives you another angle to look at your work. It resets your brain to allow you to see your work in a different angle and to fix any mistakes that might be there. Wait, there is? Yeah, there's, there's free trials for all Adobe products. They'll last for seven days, but like, yeah. Yeah, Scribbles has super squiggly whiskers. I always forget to draw them, so I just have to... Whenever I draw Scribbles, I have to, like, give myself the mantra of, like, don't forget his whiskers. <laughs> Every time that I draw my friend's characters, it's always, like, there's something that I always forget to draw. If I'm drawing uh, Scribbles, it's his whiskers that I forget. If I'm drawing Pierce, I forget the twig in his hair. Actually, I, I'm pretty good with Lunin. If it's Atros, I'm forgetting, like, usually it's the choker around his neck. If it's Soren, I tend to forget his bandages. But yeah, like I tend to always forget like a single thing about all my friends' characters. I feel really bad about it, so I just always have to give myself a moniker every time now. But it doesn't it doesn't matter, I'll still forget it. <laughs> you show so fast, comment to watch. Thank you. Sweater's so cute. Yeah, it's fall season. I have been drawing. I have a really big assignment that I have to finish soon, so I've been drawing, like, a lot. It's it's called, like, the fall-themed illustration. I have to make a big illustration based around the word fall. Doesn't necessarily mean it needs to be, like, autumn fall. It can just be the word fall itself, because there's a lot of meanings behind that word. But we are tasked with illustrating it, and I have it due soon. Uh Kimchi, thank you for the $4.99 donation. Thanks for these live streams. They're always really informative and have helped me improve my art tremendously. Thanks, Jesse and Wayne Canvas. Of course, bestie. I'm glad you enjoy the streams. Thank you for the donation. Appreciate it. But yeah, no, I've got a... I've got to finish that illustration soon. I'm, I'm like, I'm on the lining stage. I had to like 3D model. I 3D modeled the background a bit and I had to finesse some of the perspective and stuff like that. It's very like the voice in the back of her head whiskers. It's true. Um, here, I'll show you guys. It was a, it's a fun, it's a fun illustration. I'm having a lot of fun with it, but it's it's gonna take forever. Hang on, where is this? Where is this folder? Here. I'm still in the process of working on it. Please load. Come on, there you go. It's this really big, like, here, let me just get rid of the lines for a second. But it's this really big, like, scene where we're looking down on a kitchen. And they're like, they're baking mini pumpkin pies. So it's a three-point perspective kind of kind of piece on a long canvas because I just really like working on long canvases. So win, it's so win. He's so win. But yeah, I'm still in the process of lining it, so I've gotten Pierce done. I've gotten Scribbles done. Um, don't forget his bandages. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I forgot his bandages again. Whoa. Oh. Thanks. He'd still have it in in the modern AU too. Okay. I will remember that. But yeah, now I'm still in the process of it. Yeah, so Corn is right here, and he's the one mixing the batter. And this is Puddles, this is Pierce's dragon pet friend. Lunin is the old man of the group. There's Atros, our teethling. And then Sowen, or Sorin, our paladin. But yeah. This is gonna be a fun one to finish. I'm really excited to finish this one. It's gonna be great. 
showed us his background last week. I did not. I made this piece um, this Monday. <laughs> um, no, I showed you a different one. Similar composition, though. It was uh, it was the uh, it was Mara Dolis in a what's it called in the eating at a cafe. All male characters. Yep, there are no women in our party. They're all dudes. Species is Scribbles. Species is Scribbles is a tabaxi. He's a tabaxi wizard bard. Any tips for glasses? Draw the glasses first on a separate layer and move them around because glasses are like don't try to draw in one shape and then the other if you really struggle with them draw them as a flat plane first and draw your shape within that plane so you can get the right angle for them so like if you have like a head and they're looking downwards you have like your eyes here kind of like that i like your nose right here and you know the glasses are supposed to go over right here Draw in the angle for them first, and then draw in the detail for the glasses afterwards. So then you know the angle that they're supposed to go on for the head. Hopefully that helps. Scribbles has two tails? No, it's just one long tail. His tail is a lot fluffier, but I felt like drawing just kind of a, a long, kind of thin tail right now. How many things can your D&D &D character be at once? I get the species part of being a bard, wizard, etc. I don't get that part. So that's called multi-classing. So you're, you can have more than one class. You can technically have as many classes as you want, but it's not a good idea. So some people take certain levels of different classes because they get different things at different levels. So like some people would take like a level of warlock to get like Eldritch Blast or something. Um, some people will take a level of like bard to get like some of the some of the i don't i don't 100 percent remember about bard um some people will take a couple la levels of cleric for healing that sort of thing but it's it's all about taking levels of different classes so that you can do different things and there's also a base requirement for multi-classing that's right ray thank you um so if you don't have the correct stats for it then it, you can't multi-class into something Have a good sleep, Marlene. How do you do D and D? D and D is very complicated. If you don't, it, it it's it's complicated at first. It's something that you get used to. Like I remember when Numuik and Chat Ray, when she first told me about D and D, I was like, no, this sounds too complicated. <laughs> And then I watched uh, our other friends play, and I was like, oh, this makes a lot more sense now, and now I get it. It's like, it's not that bad anymore. Like, I can show you what a character sheet looks like, and I can show you what that means, but it's 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 complicated at first, but then you kind of get used to it, and it's no longer that complicated, I don't think. Please do. You want to see a character sheet? Okay. I can pull mine up. I can pull up corns. Actually, you know what? Let me pull up Kingsley's, because that might be a little bit... Just because. Yeah, so this is for my character Kingsley. He's my human warlock. So, these basically just tell you all the different things about the characters. So, like, up here are, like, my stats. So, these are pretty good stats, right? 10 is, like, your average, so anything higher than 10 is pretty good. Um, so, I have, like, three 16s, which is really good. Um... Right. And then this is stuff that you gotta roll for, or my attacks over here. My attacks, these are the things that I can do, different actions I can take, bonus actions. I have two weapon fighting, there's nothing interesting with that. Um, my health is over here, so if I click on this, I can either give myself healing or take damage. Um, I've also got temp HP, so I can give myself temporary HP, inspiration. This is what people have to roll if they want to hit me. So if anything rolled 14 or higher, then that character hits me. 
Um, so you have to roll to hit. So you can't just roll and do damage on somebody. You have to roll to hit. So if you roll something lower than a 14, then it's not hitting my character. Corn has an AC of 16. So anything um, 16 and above will hit Corn. Anything 15 and below will not hit Corn. So he won't take damage because it won't hit him. There's a lot to D&D. But yeah, it's 16 charisma. Yeah, it, you want high charisma for a uh, for warlock. I'll pretend I'll understand this, but it sounds pretty epic, yeah. Can you play online? So if you're playing online, I play over the internet with my friends, but you need a group of people. It's a tabletop RPG. So you it's not like it's a video game. You need to... It's, it's something where you need a dungeon master or DM to run it for you. So it's not something that you can just like... Oh, that's corns. Where is Scribbles? There it is. Scribbles is a very dark cat. Oh. Ugh. First time you played D&D, how nervous was I? It, it, tremendously so. <laughs> I had never roleplayed before. I had never done any of this before. I was incredibly nervous. I had never, pro I'd never properly practiced Korn's voice either. Like Korn's voice was really tough to do at first, cause like I gotta play as like a little boy, pretend like pretending to have the voice of a little boy. So it was like, it was very like tough. Now I've almost done it for twenty sessions. True, yeah. But it was, it was a really, it was really like scary at first. But it, it you get used to it. Like now I look forward to sessions every single week. Like I, I am obsessed with D&D. Um, but yeah, Korn's voice was really tough to do at first. It was like, it was so hard to do Korn's voice. And then like, now I'm so used to it. I'm like, I can just do it like, at like, at like any interval. Like if I just wanted to switch into Korn's voice, I can switch to it whenever I want. It's just like, it's just an automatic like swap. No, Scribbles is a black cat. <laughs> there we go. I have a whole sheep and nobody to play D&D with. Cries. <laughs> One of my friends just made a new character and he has the same, like, he's, like, sad because he's like, I really want to play this character, but I have, like, I don't have a campaign to join. This looks like an Animal Crossing character. Scribbles does look like an Animal Crossing character. I think I thought that the first time I saw him, too. Yeah, D and D is a lot of fun. It's it, you do need a group of friends to play with. You need a. I'm not a fun people, but you know, I just so happened to be very lucky that my best friend had more friends who were in all D and D obsessed. So that made my life very easy. According to my other friends who are both Pokemon streamers, you can tend you can tend to bet on Pokemon players also being really into D and D. According to them, I I cannot vouch, but how long does the single session take? Depends. Minimum is usually three hours. I think the max we've gone for is like six and a half, six and a half to seven hours, something like that. Something like that. It was that was the longest session we've ever had. Three hours. Three hours is considered a short a short session. That was the exact same reaction that I had when she told me about D and D. She was like, "Yeah, I mean, three hours. Like three hours is a pretty short session." I was like, "That's short." And now I know what she means. Three hours is super short. <laughs> Yeah, three hours is not that long. For a session especially, like, it feels like, 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 it'll go by so fast. That his mouth or nose? It's his mouth. It's like the little, like, like that kind of mouth. Yeah, time flies by so fast when you're playing D&D, it's true.
You role play by texting with people, but not D and D. Yeah, that's fair. Like we we play D and D with like our cameras on. We're all like we're all in, like a Discord call. Can you find a campaign? Group, get a group of friends. Find a DM. You just gotta find people who are also interested in it. Oh my gosh, can you hear the geese? I'm so sorry. It's We're having a real Canada moment today. <laughs> Trying to get into D&D, low-key terrified my friends thinking I'm weird. Don't worry, listen. We are cringe, we are legion. Embrace it. Hyunk, yeah, for real. You, you can, I'm sorry if you can hear the hyunkening happening behind me. How many people do you need to play? Minimum of like, I'd say like two or three. You need one DM, so you mean three people total, one DM, two players. A good party is usually like three or four people. We have a party of six. So nope, we have a party of four. Nope, six. Hang on, scribbles, corn, Pierce, Lunin, Atro, Soren. Six. We have a we have a party of six. <laughs> I have a club for D and D at my school. Nice. That's a good place to get started. What does the DM do? D the DM is the one who controls the game. So they're the one who takes you through the narrative. They're the one who takes you through what actions you're supposed to take, right? So they're the one that controls the story, right? It's not a video game. So your DM has to plan everything and they have to plan how your session is gonna go. They've gotta be really good at improv because obviously you can't predict what your players are gonna do. So you've gotta like kind of have a few avenues depending on how, which way they're gonna go. You have to ask your players what they wanna do, let your players debate, so on and so forth. Oh, it's, it's, apparently it's, like, very stressful for a DM, but they love it. Every DM that I've talked to is, like, it's so hard, but it's also, like, I, they, they love it. But yeah, it, as the DM, the DM is the one with the hardest job, I'd say. And it's very time-consuming, yeah, because you have to plan it all out, and you gotta, like, world-build a little bit if you're not working from a module, that sort of thing. Oh, I forgot to give him pants. I'll do that. <laughs> A module? Yeah, so you could get, like, a book that already has, like, a like a set campaign or a set, like, world or a set, like, storyline that they can run rather than coming up with it yourself. Coming up with a story yourself is called homebrew, so that's, like, coming up with, like, absolutely everything on your own. Usually world builders really like that, uh, but most DMs tend to just work with modules or things that already exist. A really popular one is Curse of Strahd. That's one that people tend to run. Giving so much fun. It's hard, but the unpredictability part is part of the enjoyment, yeah. Is there a way to get better at drawing eyes even? Yeah, so if you draw in the shape of the head, like if you just draw in the shape of the head, you know where your eye line is gonna go. Find where the top of your eyes are gonna go, curve it around the head. Find the way, place where the bottom of your eyes is gonna go, curve it around the head. And that way you'll know what your heights should be. Because your heights should stay the same, but your width should not. <laughs> Ugh, apologies. Bless me. The so DM can just make an entire world by themselves. Sounds like a job for me, yeah. No, I I very much want to get into DMing. I've, like, pre-ordered a couple books. Um, or a book. I pre-ordered a book. But I'd like to... I'd like to get into DMing at some point. Thank you. I like the little cat character. I also quite like Scribbles. Scribbles is very fun to, to draw. Made a few homebrew games, very fun, but you have to prep hardcore before launching the game, yeah. You gotta prep or just be very, very good at improv. <laughs> How does one discover or find their own art style? Find what inspires you. Usually your art style will mimic whatever you like. If you like anime, more likely than not, your style is going to lean to that. If you like more Western things, more likely than not, your style is going to lean towards that. 
Like, obviously that's not guaranteed, but it is a, a higher likelihood that that's what's going to happen. Hang on. I need to double check what Scribble's tail looks like. Okay, that's what I thought. Oh, and he has... That's right. He has little brown paws. Does he have mittens, too? No. Okay. Do I have any regrets with corn? Hmm. <laughs> I guess not planning everything out directly from the beginning. Because I a lot of what I've planned for corn, I've planned on the way. And it's kind of stuff that I'm like slowly integrating in. Because I had a base idea. Because Korn was a character that I forced myself to design. He wasn't somebody that I had immediate inspiration for. Like Kingsley. Or Kingsley, I had the idea first and then I made the character. Because Korn was very much, I'm going to play in a campaign. I've got to figure out how to what character I'm going to play. So I was very much like kind of pushed into making this character, which I'm fine with. I adore Korn now. It's like favorite. But it was very... Like I had a very baseline idea for what I wanted corn to be and i didn't really think too much outside of that and then i started to get more into this character and then that's when i started to really like know what i wanted with him or understand where i wanted to take him and stuff like that um but i didn't have that straight from the beginning so it i guess that's the one thing i regret with corn is not planning a bit better <laughs> how much planning goes into making a character it can be however much planning you want i have a friend he just creates the character and makes lore as he goes. <laughs> Is that a Kirby attached to your pointer? Yeah, I have a Kirby mouse. Um, OBS doesn't pick it up, but it's animated. He's walking. Does Corn and Scribbles have to sit outside when the team go into a bar? No. Scribbles tried a bit of alcohol at one point, and now he hates it. <laughs> Corn does not really know what alcohol is, so he's not allowed to have any. <laughs> he gets apple juice. I relate to the cat, yeah. <laughs> I have a character I want to play for the next session, season of show that should not be named. I'm just slowly but surely building all of her years of her life. LOL. <laughs> Sick. You love to see it. But yeah, I guess that's my main regret with Korn. It's just not planning beforehand too much with him because I wasn't really inspired when I was first given the idea of Korn. Because I was like, when I first came up with Kingsley... Kingsley, I didn't want to be my first character that I'd ever play, because he's just a little bit too complicated, I think, for someone who really doesn't know too much about D&D. So I was like, okay, I should probably pick somebody a little bit easier. And my friends were like, you know what, try doing a martial class first, because those are pretty easy to, to pick up first. So they were like, you could cheat, you should do like a, like a barbarian. And I was like, okay, so Korn's a barbarian, if you didn't know that. Um... Do you have, is it expected to have a voice for your character? You can use your normal one without being weird. Yeah. Yeah, no, you can just use your normal voice. Not, like, you'd be surprised how many D&D &D players actually don't put on a voice for their characters. Um, I personally really wanted to try out doing voices. I, I really enjoy doing Gorn's voice. But not every player has, like, a specific voice voice for a character. Like, I have a very specific voice for Korn. Some people just have different incantations for how they talk for their characters. Um, for instance, Rage at Numawik. When she plays as uh, Soren, she gives him a bit of a stutter. She makes him a little bit more nervous. Um, the person who plays Pierce, Scarecrow Sketch, he gives him an Australian accent. Um, Scribbles has a New York accent. Lunin... Um, played by our lovely friend, lovely friend Cryo. He plays Lunin with a really deep voice. Deep and gravelly. But you don't have to give him a voice, no. There was like... There, we had a DMPC named Breeze, and Breeze was basically just uh, our DM's voice. What does beer taste like? You ever smelled nail polish remover? Yeah. That's about right. 
That's the best way that I can describe alcohol, I think. It's just, you ever smelled nail polish remover? It's about the same, like, feeling. That's how most alcohol tastes. Can I use my existing character there? A human version of a character from a show, just doesn't tell him, blah, blah, blah. What is a human for D&D? It's... D and D does have rules. Like you need to, you need to make sure it fits into a specific class. You need to make sure that it fits into a specific race, right? Because you you have like racial differences with uh, with characters that you pick, and there's like, because D and D does have a set list of like species that you should be, and it does have like a set list of like classes that you should be. Obviously, you can not follow those, but then that means you got to do homebrew. In which then you gotta work with your D and DM about the rules for whatever that character is gonna be. Because if you make your character too OP, or if you make your character too, like, this thing, too that thing, it's not gonna be fun for the other players. And it won't be as fun for you, because there's no challenge. What's homebrew? Homebrew is, like, coming up with stuff yourself. So, like, there are, like, set rules, there's set characters, the stuff that you can do, set worlds. But homebrew is just kind of making it up yourself. Making it up yourself, coming up with rules, coming up with statistics and stuff like that all on your own. Can you choose default stats for your character? You always have to start at zero. You never start at zero. So when you do your stats for a character, you roll for them. So you roll for your stats. Um, whatever your starting stats are, are determined by the dice. So there, uh, we use D&D Beyond, so you can just automatically roll your stats there. But you have to use a bunch of D6s if you want to roll your, your stats. Um, so those will determine what your stats are. I think max you can get on just straight rolls are like 18. Oh, but there's also standard array, yeah. 15, 14, 13, 12, 10, and 8. But yeah, you gotta roll stats. If you, if you don't want to choose standard array, then you can roll stats. Most DMs will accept standard array, though. Yeah, so we're almost done here, guys. We've got about maybe, like, uh, 12-ish minutes left. Can you switch around standard array? Yeah. The standard array is, like, those are the stats that you want. And you can just choose whichever stat you want to plug those numbers into. So if you wanted, like, a fi if you're playing, like, a barbarian, you'd probably want that 15 in strength. And then the 14 would maybe go into, like, Constitution. Intelligence is most people's dump stat. Like, I have a... My lowest stat for corn is a 9, and that's an Intelligence. My highest right now is a 17, and that's in Strength. Constitution? Yeah, so Constitution is, like... Um... Shoot, how do I explain Constitution? So, con like... I had to roll constitution for um, if I was to get poisoned or not. You have a lower constitution if you have allergies. That's a, that's another way that I've heard it explained. <laughs> Hello. What are the stats? Ooh. Let me let me pull that up real quick. Your stats that you have are strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. So Korn has a 17 strength, a 14 dexterity, 14 constitution, 9 intelligence, 11 wisdom, and 12 charisma. So that's Korn's stats, which are just slightly above standard array, I think. Constitution just probability, not quite. Ray, are you still in here? Can you explain constitution, please? <laughs> I don't know how to explain it. D&D supposed to be a play to win the campaign or play to make the best characters in the story. Neither. D&D is an experience. It's not really like a play to win. It's not really a... Because there's no real way to quote unquote win D&D. It's a story. You're basically just going through a story. Con is how hard you can get hit and take it while also how healthy you are. There you go. So like you also have to roll con saves for if you're going to get poisoned or not. Um, or if 
or like our recent session, um, we fought a bunch of demon spiders. So we would roll constitution saves for whether we would get poisoned or not. And then our Eligern elf failed one of the constitution saves and he also got paralyzed. Can I pet corn? Of course. This is not corn, but uh, yeah, corn does not mind pets. Actually, more in campaign, he gets squished. Like, his, his head gets squished because the joke is that he feels like an eraser. Why is it called constitution? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I guess that's just the definition of that word. I'm... <laughs> Yeah, d and is, is tough if you just explain it. It's easier if you watch somebody else play first. There's a lot of, like, D&D &D campaigns. Like, I work for one, and then there's, uh, there's, like, the famous ones, like Crit Roll, um, stuff like that. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I'm sorry. Do you mean, can a player be a DM? I... Uh, you can't be both a player and a DM. You can have a DM PC, but your DM should be the one that runs the game. Thank you. Any tips for a beginner artist? Draw what you love. Draw what you love and work from there. What application am I using? Explanation. Oh, no, that's not in there. I'm using Photoshop CS. Uh, Photoshop CC. Most recent version of Photoshop. Yeah, best way of trying to understand is watching videos of others playing. It's both enjoyable and informative. Very true. Yeah, that's how I learned how to play. What website can you get a DMPC or NPC? What do you mean by that? You have to play with real people. It's not a <laughs> it's not a video game. You play D D by playing with real people. Guarantee he will not bite because he has no mouth? Not true. Corn has a very large and sharp array of teeth. <laughs> Do I have a picture of a corn's mouth open somewhere that does not involve not nice words? <laughs> I should. Yeah, here we go. Corn has a very large and like a very big and sharp array of teeth. <laughs> he won't bite, but he he's he is a danger baby. He is he is a dangerous little boy. Yeah. This is Pierce. This is our Eladrin Elf Ranger. He's my guardian. His dental plan must be expensive. He's a dragon. He's fine. Yeah, my boy. My boy is a. Yeah. <laughs> it's a cute piranha. Yeah. <laughs> my little dragon baby. Corn do have chompers. Corn do have chompers. I loved designing corn. Once I figured out how I wanted corn to be and how I wanted, like, it's corn has become, like, just my favorite thing to draw ever. He's really easy to work with, which is nice. Are kobolds the best species? There's only one right answer. I'm sorry, it's no, because I really like my dragonborn. So, <laughs> corn supremacy. True. Very true. Hello? There we go. I was like, what the heck? Have I played Splatoon 3 yet? I am still currently in the process of beating the story. No spoilers, please. <laughs> I am going to be in Splatfest this weekend, though. Team Gear. <laughs> I'm repping Team Gear in Splatfest this weekend, so... 
Anyone else team gear in here? Let's go. Yeah, DM's a real person. So, D&D, you need to play with, like, a group of actual real people. <laughs> How many different races are there in D&D? That's a good question. I have no clue. They just came out with a bunch of new ones. Um, some of the new ones include, like... Well, I mean, they're still in playtesting, I think. But there's, like, plasmoids that are new. Um, Thrycreens are new. The bug people... Yeah, there's new ones. Um, there's GIF that are new. They're hi hippo people. Um, there are so many, though. If you look up just D&D &D race list, there's a lot. Human is part of that list, though, if you ever were wondering. Nine of the player's handbooks, but there's lots of expansions since, yeah. So it's like, originally it was nine, but there's way more now. You can have figurines of characters on the table? Yeah, usually people do have uh, figurines. I've been kind of wanting to make a figurine of corn just for fun. Like, we don't play, like, on a table like we play over Discord, but, like, I kind of just want one for me. <laughs> but usually if you would have combat, you would have a physical table in front of you. And you would, like have like the, the monster there and you'd be able to move your characters around on the scene and stuff like that. But yeah, you can for, for sure play with just three people. I have a student who plays with just three people. Classes, exclamation point classes, if you want to sign up for those. Um, but we have like, uh, she plays with like three people. She's the DM and then her two friends are the players. You need a minimum of three people to play d, &D usually. I guess technically you need a minimum of two, but Minimum of three is usually the nicest one. I just have to persuade my friends to play with me, lol. I'll win. Certain age requirement? Nope. There's no age requirement, but there are, like, different skill levels for different ages and stuff like that that you should read through. Also, please read through what each class entails. If it is called a digital class, then there are digital requirements. Please <laughs> do not show up to the class without digital things. Oh, we always use D4s for minis. That's jokes. That works, though. Scribble's friendly. Scribble's is friendly. He's just he's he's just a little troublemaker, that's all. He tried to prank Lunin at one point. That was really funny. I bore witness to that. It was great. Scribble's wanted Corn to help him. Corn's a good boy and he refused. <laughs> How did I make the yellow tones and the black fur? I added, what do you mean, like the highlights? This is a soft light layer. And I just kind of added some extra little strokes in there. I didn't want to make it too intense because or else it would kind of fight with the simplicity of the, of the design. Whoops. so cute. I'd want to gently squish him. He might hiss at you. <laughs> He's okay with scritches, but he might hiss at you for that. <laughs> Any tips on drawing bug wings? I actually don't. I kind of just do them off the top of my head. <laughs> 
Would Corn hiss at me if I were to hug him? No. He'd be very confused, but he'd probably hug you back on instinct. <laughs> Corn is open to hugs. Pierce might, though. <laughs> Like, Pierce might hiss at you if you hugged Core. <laughs> Team Wall's on a send name. So you're all good. He's it, Scribbles isn't my character. I guess I should preface that. Scribbles is not my character. He's a friend of mine's character. I should have made these shadows a bit warmer, I think. Sorry, I'm just adjusting all this now. <laughs> just because I realize I probably should have chosen a different shadow color. Because I don't like how this that other one looked. It was a little too cold. Methinks. It's Pierce like Corn's guardian. Yeah, parent guardian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pierce is very much like, if you want the actual canon reason, like... Pierce found corn in the woods, and now he just kind of like unofficially adopted corn. That's basically how it happened. <laughs> That's quite literally what happened in campaign. It's like he found corn in the woods, and now he's his unofficial dad. So. <laughs> protective dad Pierce. Pierce is incredibly protective. Pierce is. An Eldrin Elf Ranger. He, um, he's a Drake Warden Ranger. So he has a dragon named Puddles. Um, he's an Eldrin Elf, so he changes. He's kind of homebrewed how his elf works, though. So it, he changes, like his his general look. Like he changes seasons based on his emotions. So when he's really angry, he turns into like Summer Pierce. And he, when I got, when Corn was kidnapped, he was Summer Pierce for that whole session. <laughs> Any ideas to make characters interesting? That's up to you. What is going on outside? I like, there's so many sounds. Can you hear that dinging? I bet he had a fit when Corn got kidnapped. Dude, okay, so we're staying at an inn. So I wasn't able to make it to the first hour of that session. I rewatched it afterward. Pierce quite literally flipped the entire, like, tavern room upside down. Like, he, he like, flipped- he ripped my mattress in, like, half. <laughs> he tore chunks out of the mattress I was sleeping on. <laughs> Corn is a dragonborn. Like, when he found me again, he, he asked Corn. like, he's, like, crying into Corn's shoulder because, like, he's happy that he found me again. He was like, I'm sorry about your mattress. And I quite, like, like, very legitimately was like, what? <laughs> like, what do you mean what happened to my mattress? What happened to my mattress? Like, what did you do? Because I wasn't there for the first part of the session. Here's panic. Yeah, no. I love Pierce. Pierce is such a good character. Like, I... Pierce is also just really fun to draw. Like, of all of it, like, currently, like, I just, over and over, I draw Pierce and Corn a lot. I love drawing Pierce. Hang on, I have doodles of Pierce. Oh, of course I have doodles of Pierce. I draw nothing but Pierce and Corn. <laughs> There's, like... Where's a good one? I mean, I showed you one earlier, but I want to show another one. Like this. So Pierce and Corn. Pierce is so fun to draw. I think I just like drawing hair like this. But yeah, Eldrin Elf Ranger. He's great. I love Pierce. It's okay. We're we're all okay now. <laughs> we're all okay now. 
Pierce is very pretty. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mind me, as I just try and make this a little bit funkier. <laughs> You're so tall, all of that snow. <laughs> Dude, his lap looks like from Smiling Friends. Corn? I tried to make Corn look very much like a Cartoon Network character. All right, though, y'all. That is 601. Thank you so much for joining. Um, thank you for popping in. If you don't know too much about the studio, um, we're not just an art channel. We're also an art studio. So if you'd like to check out the classes that we offer, be sure to check them out. Um, on wingcanvas.com. Check out the classes that we offer. Check out different things that we are teaching. Currently, we are in the fall term. If you'd like to sign up for classes, those are available, wingcanvas.com. Um, this file that you see in front of you, the scribs and the lesson, both of those will be available on our Discord. If you'd like to join the Discord, that is, again, um, exclamation point Discord or exclamation point socials, you'll be able to join the Discord and submit an art submission. Come talk to us. Come talk to the rest of the Wing Canvas family. We'll all be there. Um, but that's again on our Discord. But if you would like our working files, my working files, the things with layers, you're going to have to join our Patreon. Our Patreon is where you can get all of my working files, all of my things that, um, that have layers on them. Working files, discounts on classes, membership things, early access YouTube videos, all that fun jazz you can find over there. But all right, next week, what we are going to be doing, well, actually Sunday... If you come back here on Sunday, let me double check what we're doing on Sunday. Sunday is how to draw noses with Vanessa. So if you're going to be joining us a couple days from now, you'll be drawing noses with Vanessa. If you're going to be come back here with me next week, we are going to be drawing hairstyles. So next week, Friday, same place, same time, 4 p.m. EST, we will be drawing hairstyles together. But if you want to join up on Sunday as well, we will be drawing noses. But all right, y'all. Thank you so, so much for joining the stream. Thank you for listening to me ramble about characters for half of this. <laughs> all right. I'll see y'all next week. Au revoir. Bye-bye.